so welcome welcome to my next video and basically this review um, will give you a little bit of insight of how to set up Windows Server 2003 with IIS um, install .NET uh, I believe 2.0 and 3.0 framework uh, to get up and running uh, Windows SharePoint services 3.0 um, I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel as well as I'm going to put this in my blog. And within my blog, I'm going to place these two links. Uh, the first link uh, is the uh, details of how to download Windows SharePoint Services point three, uh, 3.0. I mean, it uh, gives you an overview of what it is. Uh, you know, Microsoft Windows SharePoint Services is a versatile technology that organizations and business units of all sizes can use to increase the efficiency of business processes and improve team productivity um, and blah 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 you guys can actually read all this when you have some time in your uh, in your lives um, basically Windows SharePoint services uh, is a is a low-key rundown of MOS MOS is basically the full blown of uh, SharePoint uh, Moz basically is Microsoft Office SharePoint Server. I dealt with SharePoint Server uh, Moz, and it's pretty cool because it gives you more of more features like integrating with uh, offices. Allows you to use, I believe, InfoPath to create forms. Um, you also could use SharePoint Designer, so you can actually uh, create different templates and change the, the design of the SharePoint rather than using everything out of the box. For this example, I'm going to use the SharePoint uh, services version. I'm going to show you guys how to install it, how to get it up and running, and hopefully on the next video I'm going to show you how to get the rest of this configuration um, up, and running, up and running so you guys could uh, use it. Um, one thing I like about SharePoint is it's, it's really cool to collaborate with uh, teams. Uh, I dealt with a company that uh, there was different um, offices and each office had their own IT department and uh, the way that we collaborated as a whole like a huge IT um, group or team was we used SharePoint and um, any kind of documentation we placed it into our document library uh, we had uh, calendars with all our meetings you know we had like a workstation task force server task force Macintosh task force all these task forces that we had and we met up we basically had a calendar invites we had a section to actually record or jot down meeting notes and if you missed that particular meeting you could actually go back into the SharePoint portal and review it which is pretty cool um, especially if you are in favor of a particular field like if you were only dealing with workstations meaning work Windows 7 deployment and someone dropped uh, a particular documentation you're able to uh, get a notification with that with SharePoint uh, server uh, I really haven't dealt too much with Windows SharePoint services um, it's pretty easy pretty simple it's really straightforward um, so let's get started so the first thing that I did was I went to this link right here which again I'm gonna place these two links and my blog uh, the second link, which is right here, this is the download. It's really small is only 77.7 .7 megabytes. Round it off around 78 megabytes. It's really small. Um, I downloaded that bad boy, and I actually did a couple of things before. Uh, before uh, dealing with Moss, I know Moss is best practice to create a, um, a SharePoint server account. So you're basically doing everything that you need to do on your server with this particular account you don't want to use administrative account or local administrative account or you don't want to use your personal uh, uh, account you want to use an account that's only designated for your SharePoint server uh, for this example on my BJDC1 virtual machine again I don't recommend doing this at all with virtual machines uh, this is only for uh, review and just to show you guys how everything is running and how things are configured and installed. Um, I normally refer uh, a domain controller to be uh, set up on a physical machine. 
um, you could try to get away and install SharePoint uh, server MOS or WSS Windows SharePoint services 3.0 you can I, I think you can actually get away with it and install it on a virtual machine uh, I created account um, I got my BJ SQL server up and running uh, the reason why that I got this up and running is because um, WSS has two versions I think it has basic and it has manu on the manu on the manu version it allows you to connect to an actual database that's the way I'm going to do it on this review on the basic one it actually installs a um, a built-in database I believe is Windows something databases on the on the physical machine that you're installing WSS um, I, I go over that stuff when we start doing the installation um, and so this is this this is the machine that I'm going to install WSS I'm already logged in into this machine okay a couple of things I already done in this machine would be you know you push out all the updates okay uh, that's best practices always push out all the updates as you can see in the in the bottom right here I have a couple of updates that I have to push out but I'm not gonna really worry about that um, but best practices when you get an up and running machine you install the OS get it up and running uh, you change the name of the operating system for this particular operating system I um, I, I put the name as internet you know, you can basically do whatever you want to do. You can you can call it whatever name whatever name you have, whatever name you want, um, and then um, you could go to DNS and create a alias or a C name to point to whatever name you want. So like, if I have internet, I go to my DNS and I could create an alias that goes to I don't know um, BJ BJ.com or whatever you want it. And then when when the user or yourself go to your browser and you go to the address bar and you type in BJ Tech or whatever you want to write it will actually go to the internet um, for, for this example I just named the internet so um, first things first first thing that you want to do you want to install IIS on your Windows Server 2003 box so the way you do it is you go to start um, you go to control panel uh, you go to add or remove programs okay first things first before I even do the IIS as you noticed um, that I uh, installed .NET Framework 2.0 as well as I did Microsoft.NET Framework 3.0 I think installing WSS at, in the beginning when I was testing this stuff out WSS was giving me problems I needed to upgrade the .NET so I installed 3.0 and then for some reason when I installed 2.0 it wasn't reading it I was really confused so I had to re-download 2.0 and do a repair and everything started working. So I'm crossing my fingers that everything works. So um, once you get that stuff installed, uh, you go back, you, know, you go to this, you want to click on add, remove Windows components. Because right now what we want to do is we want to install the internet um, information, internet services. Or it's, uh, I think it's internet information services, one of those. So I believe you will find that, where are you, where are you, where are you, here, In Internet Information Services, IIS. So you go to Application Server, by, I don't think by default this is checked, so most likely you check it. Go to Details, make sure you have ASP.NET, IIS, which is Internet Information Services, and uh, that's it. You press OK. Once you press OK, uh, I believe it will ask for uh, the Windows 2003 CD. Place the CD into your CD-ROM and let it rip. I don't believe you need to do a restart, but if you want, you want to take the proactive approach and you know um, you could reboot your your server. And you know, once you're back up and running, you will have um, a new icon inside your administrative tools, and it would be this guy. Um, I right clicked on it and I created a shortcut to the desktop double click on this guy and I went to web services extensions and I just make sure that ASP.NET version 1.1 and also version 2.0 is allowed it's strange when I installed 3.0 on a Windows 2003 it's not shown here don't really know why I, I think 3.0 is mostly for the 2008 or yeah 2008 Okay. 
I'm gonna close that up and once I got all that stuff done it's time to start installing the SharePoint so let's double click on this guy right here that's the SharePoint.exe again I got that stuff from this location right here you guys don't have to worry about it. I will have that link on my blog you can read all this stuff if you have uh, time I'm just gonna accept it for this hit continue now this is where it comes from you got the basic and you got the advanced the basic is straight off it will install WSS and it will install a in-house database within this virtual machine if I had um, if I choose basic I mean for this example because I have a SQL server on another virtual machine um, I'm gonna drop everything on that virtual machine and I'm gonna do advanced uh, you got two options. You got a standalone. Standalone is the default one that they choose, which is installs all components in a single machine, includes a Windows internal database, cannot add services ser service to create a SharePoint form. This right here is the same thing as the basic, which is weird. That's not what we want. We don't want Windows internal database. Uh, I want to put my database into another server. So I want a web front end. Only install components required to render content to users. Can add service to from service uh, servers to form a serve SharePoint farm. Sorry, <laughs> can't read today. Um, data location. I think the default would drop it here. I will keep it. I won't change it. Feedback. Uh, I don't want to give any feedback. I leave it as is. This is what I want. Install now. It starts installing everything. I my phone somewhere. Can't find my phone. I lost my phone. There you go. I found my phone. Cool. So once all the initial stuff is done and start setting up, uh, you could close it. And by default, it checks this off. So run the SharePoint product and the technologies to configuration wizard now. Uh, this is where you get your hands a little dirty and you start getting with the start configuring uh, the services the way that you want it. I'm gonna hit close. Have that default checked off. Um, it should pop up with this. Bam. So, um, it's two things that you need to do in order to configure SharePoint products and technologies. Uh, you will require the following information. The name of the database server and the database where the server farm configuration data will be stored. Username and password for the database access account that will administer the server farm. Now, I, I'm using WSS admin. WSS admin, which is WSS, stands for Windows SharePoint Services. Um, that's the account that I'm logging in to the to BJ IIS machine as well as when I went to the secret server I gave it access to the secret server so um, that account is able to create a database with no problem okay so I'm gonna go back here gonna hit next uh, let's give you a brief little warning that some services would be um, that are started are going to be reset some of them are IIS, Internet Information Services, uh, SAS, which is SharePoint Administration Service, and uh, STS, which is SharePoint Timer Service. Uh, I'm cool with that. Just hit yes. Okay, so now connect to the server farm. Because this is a brand new server farm, we want to create a new far server farm. We don't have a, an existing server farm. Okay, so once you, let's say you already had a server farm already created and you are adding another one on top of it, this is where you will click yes and just hit next. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing how this part goes, you know, uh, shoot me an email. My email is attached to my blog as well as you could give a comment on my YouTube and say, hey Bernardo, um, I'm interested in how that goes. Can you, you know, hook me up with a video? I'm, I, I don't mind doing a video. Uh, for now, I'm going to hit no. 
next and this is where it gets kind of tricky bam so it's asking for the database server our database server is bj sql this is the database name that it will give and i will give it the accounts give it the password if everything goes well you should be able to go to the next page bam awesome if it was a problem um i know when i first started doing this i had a huge problem it wasn't allowing me to get it uh, and it was a silly little error that i did it was basically on a secret server firewall issue so if you're having any issues connecting to your secret server and you have everything right as well as the login you got the database correct you have the serve the server name correct you have all that correct and you're sure that everything is correct most likely is an issue with your firewall so just disable the firewall in the sql for best practices Disabling a firewall into like an, an enterprise environment is is okay, uh, and the reason why is because most likely you have a built-in firewall. Um, you have like a, a Cisco firewall switch, or you have a DMZ. Um, you, you might have those kind of things that um, it's your actual firewall on your network. For for this example, it's only for testing purposes, so I'm not. I really don't care about the firewall for now. Um, it's uh, requesting for a specific port number. If you do not specify a port number, a random one will be chosen. So I'm gonna pick a, I'm just gonna give it 8080. Why not give it 8080, whatever. Remember, I think 80, 80 is the default one for IIS. So I'm just gonna give it 8080. Um, you got two versions of security settings. I'm gonna use the NTLM for now. Um, because I, I'm, I'm more comfortable with that. I know Kribos, uh, the only time I learn Kribos is when you're dealing with Macintosh. So I'm just gonna leave this one with default. I'm gonna hit next on this guy. It gives you a rundown and everything right here. Of what you've done. This guy right here would be your portal. Your um, Central, I think it's called SharePoint Central something. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna create a shortcut. We're gonna paste that guy in there, hit next. We're gonna give it the name of intranet. Bam, so we got that. Hit next. Once you hit next, uh, nine steps. If everything goes well, it should be quick. It's already on uh, creating, configuring the database. So most likely if I go to bj-sql, uh, the database should be there. But I'll probably give it some time. Okay, so 
It's completed. Configuration is successful. Uh, again, it gives you another uh, preview of what was done. And that's it. We're going to hit finish. Once you hit finish, um, you're going to log in into your administration uh, central whatever I forgot the name of it so let's let's see if we can log in and know the actual name of this thing so you're gonna use the account that you're logged in the account that uh, has administrative rights and uh, let's get into this bad boy Uh, yeah, I want to add this. Add it to the security group. And bam, that's it. Central administration. There you go. Uh, SharePoint Central administration. And that's about it. You have about uh, a couple of administrative tasks that you have to configure for it to actually get up and running. I believe if I go to if I go to my browser and open up a tab, I don't know if this will work. It won't work. Wait, minute, minute. Yeah, I think I'm able to access the central point. Yeah, there you go. I'm able to access this, and the only reason I'm able to access this is because it's to live but uh, I haven't created a an actual site or a website for users to get into uh, there you go okay so I know it's up and running this is on the central one uh, but I haven't created a SharePoint site that will be my what my fourth task to do um, so hopefully on my second video if I have some chance I go over these tasks uh, these administrative tasks to get it to get an actual SharePoint site up and running so you can prioritize it to the user but this video is just a rundown how to get it up and running uh, quick and simple uh, hopefully in the future I get a copy of Moss and I can show you guys how to you know uh, get Moss up and running is the same approach as nothing nothing too too crazy all right so i hope you guys enjoy this video please leave a comment and you know uh leave me a uh, give me some feedback um thanks